for this week's Challenge Wednesday, we have our patient, Dwayne, and Dwayne presents for an evaluation of his lower back and perineal pain, but arrives without a comprehensive medical history. The patient reports a sudden onset of fever, dysuria, and urgency one week ago. The patient's medication list shows active 500 milligrams of Levaquin. Which of the following is the patient most likely experiencing? So we have A, prostatitis, B, ureteritis, C, benign prostatic hyperplasia, and D is prostate cancer. All right, so this is one of the GU questions. Uh, it's, it's really often missed because we spend more time in musculoskeletal, neurocardio, and all those other ones, uh, but we don't spend much time in these male-dominated uh, pathologies, GU pathologies. So what we need to do is we need to walk our way through this question, figure out what we need to use in order to get down to the final answer. So tune in with me. So we got Dwayne presents for an evaluation of his lower back and perineal pain, but arrives without a comprehensive medical history. So that's a long sentence there, a little verbose, but there are some things that we want to pay attention to. I would say the fact that the patient has lower back pain and perineal pain is important because not all GU pathologies are going to give you perineal pain. So we want to keep that in mind. So think about what type of GU pathologies are consistent with perineal pain because again not all of them are but there's quite a few of them that do cause lower back pain so that might not help us out too much but we want to keep those ones in mind we're potentially going to use those later now it says that the patient has lower back and perineal pain but arrives without a comprehensive medical history I'm not going to use much of that, that final part of the sentence, but I do know that we're going to need to do something extra as we continue down the questions, kind of like they're setting us up right now. Let's continue. It says the patient reports a sudden onset of fever, dysuria, and urgency one week ago. All right, so that's important. It says, it realize, it says sudden onset of these. And let's go ahead and knock down each one of them. So we got the fever. And typically when a person has a fever, uh, what, what's, what's one thing that you're already thinking about? Like your patient comes in with a fever. You as a physical therapist, what is something that you're thinking about? Because when I hear that, I'm already thinking something systemic. Not necessarily a pathology jumping in my mind, but just the fact that it's something systemic in nature. I know that one thing that can cause a fever is something like an infection right or like a widespread inflammation or something like that can cause a fever so i'm keeping that in mind now dysuria if you're not familiar with that d-y-s-u-r-i-a for those of you on the podcast dysuria uh, that's going to be painful urination all right so keep it in mind like okay you know why would my patient potentially have painful urination not all pathologies cause that and then last but not least, it says an urgency one week ago, meaning that the person's having this immediate or sudden uh, uh, just sensation that they need to use the restroom, right? They need to void. And so we have a sudden onset of all three of these and the patient has lower back pain and perineal pain. I mean, that's quite a bit of signs and symptoms going on already to help us roll in and roll out some of these answer choices. Let's move down to the next sentence. The next sentence says the patient's medication list shows active 500 milligrams of Levaquin. Got to stop there for a second, too. What does that mean to you? Think about it. You're in the car right now. Put it on cruise control. Think with me, baby. What is 500 milligrams of Levaquin? What is that there to do? Levaquin is also known as levofloxacin, and it's actually an antibiotic that we use, all right? And so the fact that the medication list shows active use of this med lets me know that what's going on? Potentially this bacterial infection, am I right? Now we're using the antibiotic. That makes sense. Again, that may help us as we get down into the answer choices. Now, we finish up here with the question stem. It says, which of the following is the patient most likely experiencing? And then for those of you on the podcast, let me go ahead and read through these answer choice again. It says, A, prostatitis, B, 
ureteritis, C, benign prostatic hyperplasia, and D, prostate cancer. I really feel like we can use some of the signs and symptoms to already eliminate quite a few of these, but we'll, let's go in order, though. A says prostatitis. So inflammation of the prostate. Can that pathology cause lower back pain? What do you all think? Those of you who, who are here with me live right now, you, you're in the car. Does prostatitis cause lower back pain? Yes or no? You should be saying, yes, it can. So I like that. Can prostatitis also cause perineal pain? You bet your bottom dollar it can. Yeah, pain in and through around that groin area for certain. All right. Pain between the legs for certain pain that radiates into the inner thigh region, that as well. All right, so prostatitis fits the clinical picture here. But let's continue down. It says sudden onset of fever. Can prostatitis cause that? Yeah, I said it's something a bit more systemic, right? Some type of infl inflammation. Yeah, that can cause a fever. Prostatitis also can cause dysuria or painful urination. More specifically, burning urination. And prostatitis can also cause urgency, that feeling, that sudden onset of, of, of having to void, the sensation of having to void. So prostatitis fits all of these. And since bacterial infection is one of the major reasons why we get prostatitis, guess what? The fact that the patient's taking Leviquin, that fits this picture as well. I love A as an answer choice right now. I, I really feel like it hits every single piece of this question. I'll put a check mark next to it for now, but I need to look at B, C, and D. You might need to remind, rewind me, y'all. You might need to do that because I know there was a lot of information, but you definitely need to know it for the MPTE, all right? Let's go ahead and look at B. B says ureteritis, all right? And ureteritis, so that's inflammation of the ureter, not urethra. There's a difference. There is a ureter and there's a urethra. Those are two different different uh, body structures. All right. So your urethra is considered the, the, the lower urinary tract and your ureter is considered a part of your upper urinary tract. There's a difference. So the question to you is, if my patient has really an upper urinary tract infection, do they tend to have lower back pain? Uh, more flank pain, I would say. I mean, it's pretty specific to the, like the flank pain more so. All right. And then they can have pain that radiates into the anterior part uh, of their pelvic region, suprapubic, and even go into the, the groin area. So flank pain is more common. The one thing that I will, would say with ureteritis is the fact that they don't really have perineal pain, though. All right, they, they don't have that, so I automatically don't like this answer. Then as we continue down, it says sudden onset of fever, which that could happen, yeah. But dysuria, that's another thing I don't like with ureteritis. Why? Because ureteritis is more of a upper urinary tract infection, and a lot of these patients don't necessarily have pain when they're urinating like a urethritis. All right. Or, or something dealing with the lower urinary tract. They tend to have a lot more like burning symptoms and that sort of deal. Can you get dysuria with ureteritis? Yeah, but again, I, I would say that that's not as common. All right. Urgency, you definitely can get with it. And we could be using Leviquin with ureteritis. That makes sense. But overall, we're not trying to find an okay answer. We're trying to find the best answer. And I'm here to say right now that ureteritis doesn't have perineal pain. It's just not common. All right? And so still the best answer for us right now is what? Prostatitis. So let's go ahead and put an X next to B. Let's look at C. C says benign prostatic hyperplasia. For those of you who are unfamiliar with that, that's an overgrowth of the prostate. But it's benign. It's not cancerous. It's benign. All right. I should say it, it, it's not a form of uh, metastatic cancer. It's benign. So we just got this enlargement of the prostate. And one thing that's bad about that is that it starts to press on the urethra. Well, what does that start to create? That starts to create more of an obstruction problem. 
I have a, a mnemonic that I use. It's called DRIB, all right, D-R-I-B, and it's dribbling, all right? So they, they usually have dribbling at the end of when they're urinating. They have a really weak stream. They have incomplete emptying. And then they have bladder fullness or the, the pressure that's in their bladder. So those symptoms are more common with benign prosthetic uh, uh, hyperplasia. Not really this whole thing of a fever. I mean, you can have dysuria, you can have urgency, but a fever is just not really common. Obviously, benign prosthetic hyperplasia is not a bacterial infection and you wouldn't be using an antibiotic for BPH. You wouldn't. All right. And so there is plenty of evidence to show that I'm not dealing with benign prosthetic hyperplasia, a.k.a. BPH on the MPTE. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that answer. Still, prostatitis is our best answer right now. Let's look at D, the last one. D says prostate cancer. And this is where a lot of people get kind of tripped up because they're like, oh, am I looking at cancer or am I looking at a prostatitis? Well, here, prostate cancer, can it cause low back pain? Yeah, it can. Can it cause perineal pain? It could. It definitely could. Can they get a sudden onset of fever? Yep. They can. All right. So a lot of these symptoms that are here, we can get with prostate cancer. But here's the deal. This is what I need you to write down in your notes. As soon as you get to the clinic or get off the treadmill, write this down. That prostate cancer actually, you know, is, I'm not going to say lies dormant, but a lot of patients don't even realize that they have it for quite some time. It flies under the radar, if you will. A lot of patients will actually complain of obstruction-based symptoms. They'll actually complain of symptoms that are more consistent with a prostatic hyperplasia. So they have dribbling at the end of urination. They have a really weak stream. They have things like incomplete uh, 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 emptying or bladder fullness. They start to present with symptoms similar to a benign prostatic hyperplasia instead of symptoms more in the realm of a prostatitis. All right. So in the future, when you're trying to differentiate these two, you need to remember that prostate cancer usually presents with more symptoms that are more obstructive in nature and not so much like a prostatitis that has all these fancy ones like the fever, the dysuria, the urgency and and all of this irritation based stuff. Now, one extra point to kind of like nail this coffin shut is the fact that this statement says the patient's medication list shows active 500 milligrams of Leviquin. We said that that was a antibiotic. Now, do we use antibiotics for cancer, y'all? Is, is prostate cancer a bacterial infection? Yes or no? Because if it is not, then we need to eliminate D. Because there's no reason why that patient would be taking that medication for prostate cancer. And so that leaves us with our final answer, our best answer of A, prostatitis. Congratulations to those of you who got this question correct. It was not easy. It was not easy. Um, if you have problems with this area, you know, GU, a lot of times it's just spending more time with it. Getting more repetitions in with this, these concepts will allow the stuff to be retrieved a lot easier and for you to get down to the right answer. But for some of it, you need a mnemonic to help you out on the MPTE.